We're ready to go, yeah? Good afternoon, members, officers, and any members of the public who may be watching this uh, live feed. Welcome to the, this meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee, today, 24th of June, 2022. This meeting is being live streamed out to the public, so anyone present in the room will automatically give their consent to be recorded as part of the, the rules and regs. I'm Jess Hales, I'm the Chair of the Grants Committee, and um, on the screen we have the gentleman with the beard is the lead member for finance, John Williams, Councillor John Williams. We have Councillor Anna Bradnam, who is going to represent for one of the community chests, I believe. Two apologies. I don't think we've got any. <laughs> I do apologise, everyone. We've had a nightmare with technology this morning, so, or this afternoon. So. Sorry about that. Kira. There are no apologies. No apologies, no, lovely, please. thanks. Um, and uh, declarations of interest, members? Judy's? Um, yeah, I've got a declaration of interest, non-pecuniary interest, in the Cogwheel Trust. I won't be taking part in the debate or voting on that item, and, and um, I will leave the room okay. for that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Officer Major. I also have a, a pecuniary... Um, declaration of interest on agenda item number five, which is the review of the mobile warden scheme. If there is a discussion of finance, then it may be tricky, so I need to be out. So I'll leave the room too. Okay, thank you. Chair, are you taking that first, and shall I leave now? Well, when we, well I'm just going to yeah. go to that. So <clears throat> I'm going to do the, meet, the minutes first. Right, so uh, members, as, as the normal process for this council, can we go to agenda item number three, which is... Uh, probably page one for the minutes of the last meeting, which was back in April. Uh, we'll go through the normal page one, sing out if you've got anything. Page two and page three. So probably this applies mainly to Bill and Sue, who are the oldest surviving members of the committee. So you're both okay with it. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks. Can I take that as uh, being able to sign them off? Lovely, thank you very much. Could you watch with uh, you then, Lewis? Right, so we're going to agenda item number four. Um, just to say that Councillor Rippert has just left the room and she's now out of, out of earshot. Um, it's the community chest funding application. So what we're going to do to allow Councillor Rippert to, to, to take part in the rest of the um, agenda item, we are going to bring the Cogwheel Trust application to the front and that is page 15 of your agenda i believe yeah cogwheel counseling okay um emma are you going to present this yes i am lovely can you hear me, emma, so you hear me you okay mind if we could do yes. cogwheel first and then you just carry on as normal through the rest of it but give us a second and i'll get judith back in the room yeah thank absolutely. you absolutely over thank to you, you emma Okay, I'll just do a little intro. Um, so I'm pleased to say that we received 15 applications this month, equating to £20,181. And this includes um, 2,895.99 for our first three biodiversity applications. And I'm just going to scroll to page 15. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I've got these all in order. So. Um, Cogwheel, okay. So, um, so Cogwheel Counselling is a Cambridge-based charity formed in 1988. It is affiliated with the British Association for Counselling and Psychotherapy and provides affordable and accessible counselling to those on low and limited incomes. Counselling is provided to both adults and children, including families and couples. Residents from all of South Cambridgeshire can access their service via self-referral. And in 2021, a total of 3,900 counselling sessions were provided, benefiting over 300 people. Over the last 12 months, the charity has returned to in-person counselling in Cambridge, replacing the online sessions that took place during COVID. Um, the current lease in Cambridge expires at the end of this month, um, but as there are long-term plans for the owner to redevelop the site, only a short-term lease can be offered beyond this month. So for this reason, the charity have looked at um, alternative premises and have found two suitable rooms in the C Cambridge Citizens Advice Bureau. Um, these two new rooms will be smaller than the present ones, 
and as such new furniture like chairs will be required um, as well as equipment for children um, including an art trolley a sand pit trolley and um, tub chairs so around 50 clients will benefit each week from using these rooms and numbers are expected to increase in early autumn so total costs for these things as described on the um, on page 15 are £1,743 and £1,400 is being requested through the community chest. Um, they've also confirmed that they can cover the shortfall if they are successful with this grant. Um, three councillors are in support, councillors Sue Ellington, councillor Pippa Halings and councillor Martin Kahn. So over to you. Thank you, Emma. Colleagues? So, Bill. I, I feel this charity is doing a really good job that isn't really done by the NHS. It's available, it's used, and it's not asking for an enormous amount of money. And I really feel that uh, it, they're right in saying it's not about parish councils and whether they can support it uh, because it does provide a service across South Downs and so I feel very much supportive of it and I have supported it when I asked to when I saw the original application. Thank you Sue. Bill? Um, I just say that I 100% agree with Councillor Ellington's assessment of this. Thank you. Sorry Dan, anything? Nothing to add Chair. Thank you. Um, and I'll take it then that we're all in, in agreement with that. So um, that's, a, that's a yes from us, please, Emma. Excellent. Right, so if we, we leave it now to you to go back through the agenda, if that's OK. I think we go back to page nine now, isn't it, I think? Yeah, Judith back in. Yeah, can we just, before you do, can we get Judith back in, Jonathan? Yeah. Please. Apologies to all those who are watching. Um, I forgot to mention that Jonathan and Kira are our two democratic services officers in the room as well, so how rude of me. That's a big in the room, so. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, Chairman. Can I make a, a general statement when Judith gets back, please? Okay, welcome back, Judith. Thank you. Um, before you go on, Emma, if you start, Emma, I'm going to go on before you start. Uh, Sue Ellington, just like to say something. Councillor Ellington, over to you. It, it's just something that I've noticed as reading through all the applications, and that is that when we first started to do these grants committees, as we are in this forum now, we made a certain sort of statement about parish councils and whether or not they were supporting the application. And I suppose I've noted, as I've read through this batch of applications, that there are rather vague support from parish councils. Oh, yes, we cut the grass. Or, oh, yes, we, we back 10 years ago, we gave them 100 quid. And I just think, I just wanted to raise that issue, not to say no, but just that we did make that statement that people, that parish councils could raise their precept to support their, their local groups, and that the South Cams wasn't necessarily in the business of supporting everything. Thank you, Sue. Actually, that's a really valid point. Um, I think we have mentioned this on a number of occasions, which, I mean, there's the S137 monies that councils are, parish councils can dip into if they wish. Councillor Henley, Bill. Yeah, I agree with uh, Councillor Wellington here. I mean, I was actually going to raise it as we went through the papers, but having set, brought it all together, you know, I think we can expect to see parish councils supporting their own community projects. I mean, really, they, have, they can raise the money through a precept. Pre There's absolutely no excuse. Okay, thank you. Emma, you're back on. 
Okie dokie. Right, so back to page nine. Um, this is the Bar Hill Cricket Club, which began in 1985, and it's open to people of all ages and abilities. Both adult and child practice training is provided with qualified coaches as well as league games in the Cambridgeshire Cricket Association. Current membership um, um, is 36 adults and 15 under 18s. And the club would like to provide a portable flat sheet protector for the cricket wickets on the village green. And this will not only protect it from the wet weather, but will allow more crit cricket to be played. And total project costs are £342 and £300 is being requested from the community chest. So that's £315 for the sheet and the pegs and £27 for delivery. Um, the request to the parish council was too late to be included in the parish council meeting before the community chest deadline. So I'm un unable to say if they're able to contribute or not. Um, but the cricket club have confirmed that they can fund any shortfalls if they are successful. And councillor Bunty Waters um, as district councillor and parish councillor is in support. Over to you. Okay, well, the first thing I'd say with um, councillor Waters is, does she speak on behalf of the parish council? So. Perhaps we should, unless you know differently, take that one with a pinch of salt for the moment, because we normally would ask whether you speak on behalf of the council for that, I suppose. So um, before I go to the, my colleagues, just one of the things that struck me with regards to what Sue and Bill both raised earlier about parishes supporting, and this was too late to go to their, their own parish meeting. Um, would we be able to um, just check to see if they have put any funds towards this you know, themselves as, as we go through before we pay the money out. So, okay, yeah. over to, to the floor. Bill? I, I, John Oakley has heard what, what Sue and I have said, um, and I, I don't know if he's got a view on this, but, um, you know, I, I had a big red mark against this, not because of what it is. It's perfectly, um, you know, it, it, it fits, and it's not a great deal of money either. But it's it's the principle, you know. Too late, went too late to the parish council. Why? <laughs> you know, what's you know what, what what should we do? I mean, there's going to be several like this today. I do know that uh, Auntie Waters is chairman of the parish council. I do believe, and therefore um, her endorsement of it uh, would cover. Both, but I, I agree with uh, Bill in that I think if we're going to make a stand about parish councils and whether they contribute, then I think we need to make a stand about it. Chair, can I, um, can I ask Emma to tell us exactly what um, the criteria says about parish support from parish councils what do we actually say that we expect groups to have what's you know what sort of support do we expect them to receive from their parish council when they make the application so they're asked the question um is your parish council in support um and if so how, are they making a financial contribution as well is this a question that is asked in the application form Simple question. But, but we don't actually say there's no there's no you, you must have funding from your parish council. The only thing that we have um in the criteria is if it's on parish council land, then there's an expectation yeah. of a fifty percent financial contribution. Otherwise yeah, there's I, no set. I have, have to say that. that was that was always my perception um, that was always my understanding on this, that if the parish council owned the asset, um, either the, the group leased it from them or uh, and and therefore if what they were asking for would uh, in some way either enhance or maintain that asset, then we would expect the parish council to contribute. But if it was a case that the group organisation just used the parish council um, as a tenant or, or as a you know, as a to, to, as as a um, lease to 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 rent, um, then I don't think we did expect parish councils to support. Although we would encourage parish councils to support them, 
but it was only in the case where it was going to be beneficial to the parish council that we expected the parish council to contribute or indeed um, we I think in some cases we said no this was a parish council responsibility uh, in the past but I'm not so sure that we have ever asked them to ensure that they have um, support from their parish council other than we expect them to ask um, for, for support um, but it, that was not a condition of us giving them a grant that the parish council had to fund them um, and that's my understanding and I think Emma what you're saying is that we don't actually say that they have to have parish council funding so I think it would be um, you know I, I don't think it would be fair for us now to impose that it could be that you would you could suggest to me that that should be a condition um, in future that we expect a certain contribution from the parish council and you may want to consider what that contribution should be but I think at the moment I don't think we can do that because we don't actually ask that in the current circumstances. Thank you John. Judith. Great was really just to say if you're going to put an application in it just seems to be you know that you would make sure that it got to the parish council in time just to get an answer or you know because it's up against other applications and surely that helps to promote your your cause thank you dan um just to echo actually what everyone's saying i think there is an important principle um that uh, uh, has been identified here, but I agree very much with uh, with John that we can't retrospectively ask people to jump through hoops, uh, even if going forward that's what we want to do. Um, my question about the cricket club is um, whether it has uh, a membership that extends beyond the Bar Hill Parish, uh, and if there's a way to know that, as in, is this of benefit to the wider district? Thank you, Chair. Um... I, not, I would have to check on that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> it, I mean, it's open to people of all ages and abilities. Um, normally, in these cases, they tend to be surrounding villages, and I don't think um, they have sort of said that it's not, but I can always double check that for you. Thank you, Emma. Right. Cool. Um, colleagues, what are we going to do? Bill? Um, thanks. I. I Take what Dan has said, uh, you know, it, it would be good to know, but I, my ch I think the chances are, knowing these clubs, that they will take people from surrounding villages. And I, I'm not willing, particularly since it's a very small sum, uh, I don't think we should be reject this um, for that reason, or um, we've had a clear steer from John, uh, or for um, this parish council support either. So I would be inclined to accept this. Thanks. What I will say before we go to the affirmation or vote, whichever way you like to say, is um, through you, John, to Emma, so to speak, is that should we approve this for the £300 they're asking for, that we put in there a very polite note that when this is put before the parish council, if the parish council are minded to perhaps support it in some financial way, that they would be kind enough to tell us so that we could then adjust the apportioned sum that we give. I think that would be fair. Right, because it hasn't made it to the parish council, so we're asking them if it does go to the council, could they do that? Then at least then we cover the basis. So if you're happy with that, John, that would be, yeah, yes, right. Okay, so are we happy with that, gang? Yeah, you're happy. that's a, that's a, a, an agreement there. Fantastic. Okay, so page ten, we've got Coton Football Club. Um, so they offer football coaching and games to over 150 children in and around South Cambridgeshire. The club is affiliated to the Cambridgeshire Football Association and members pay £120 a year. The club also provides support to the local primary school in Coton and has expanded to offer some girls only football teams. So from next season, the club intend to increase to six teams, um, but with this increase, there is a need for more storage facilities. Um, the club have sought permission from the parish council to install a second metal storage container at the recreation ground. And the cost for this is £3,480, including VAT, which includes the supply and installation 
of the, the metal storage container, the work needed for the concrete base and the trimming of the overhead, um, overhanging branches. £2,000 is being requested from the Queen's Chest, with the rest coming from player registration fees and fundraising through grants and or a potential increase in fees for players. The container will come flat packed and built on site, which is the greener option, as it would require less transportation than that required for a large transport container. Although fully supportive, the Parish Council cannot provide um, financial support due to other projects needed fun needing funding. They do, however, like we discussed a minute ago, charge a very low licence cost of £100 per year and pay for the grass cutting. Um, both Councillor Lisa Redrup and Councillor Michael Atkins are in support. Thank you, Emma. Colleagues, Sue? Um, I, I um, think I don't understand the licence cost. Is that what they have to pay to the Parish Council for using the ground, um, the licence cost? Um, I, I wasn't entirely sure when they said licence. I assumed they meant the sort of rent, but... Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, they did whatever they do, but they, they pay hundred pounds a year, basically. So I think that's quite a low cost for the license. But I can I can double check that with them if you would like. Uh, just my curiosity, as much as anything. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to see that they haven't asked for the full cost. That they're asking for. That they're saying that they're going to raise some money themselves from other ways, fees and so on. And I think generally it's a a good thing. Bill. Yeah, just to say, I, oh, agree, just I agree with that done. assessment. Yeah. Right, okay. Anyone else got anything to say? Can we have a look? How, how are we going to do this? Yes, no. I'm looking around the room. That's a yes, a yes, a yes, and a yes. And so another yes, please. Joe, uh, can I just ask on that? Um, yeah. To double check that there's no planning implication for this, um, um, in case the, the recreation ground is in a conservation area, for example. I can I can almost answer that categorically at the moment, and that is that if the Paris Council own the land, they have the right to uh, build up to I think it's 40 cubic uh, cubic centimeters cubic meters. Uh, Melbourne Paris Council had this exactly the same. They built a workshop on the car park, which is smack in the middle of the conservation area, and they didn't have to have planning; they just had to build it. Okay. Big. So it was okay. outside of that process. So. Okay, but it's probably worth thanks, just Joe. checking to make sure yeah. to, to advise the club that they just to check, as you rightly say. Thank you. Yeah, can let that that's fine. Okay, so were we happy with them? Sorry, you were happy, yes? That was a, a yes from us. Yeah, okay. So, um, on to the next one, which is Long Stanton Grasshoppers Cricket Club. Bear with me, I'm just going to find the page. It's oh, sorry. Sorry, Cottenham. Sorry, I'm going. I'm, I'm writing on the wrong one. Yes, Cottenham United Colts Football Club um, is a FA charter football club started in 1979. It provides football to girls and boys aged between 6 and 18 from Cottenham and the surrounding villages. There are currently 18 boys teams and six girls teams. Um, due to the expansion of the number of teams, there was a need for more goals at the parish council owned venue. So £3,628.80 is required to replace the ageing goals with modern wheeled ones. And that comes in at, um, for the actual goals, £3,484.80 and delivery of £144. Um, the maximum of £2,000 has been requested through the community chest. Um, the parish council is in support but cannot help with funding due to budget constraints, although they did contribute £1,000 towards the goals a few years ago. Any shortfalls can be met. For example, the club has been selected by the co-op for their local grant funding scheme. They will be, be approaching the Fen, Fen Edge Community Association. Um, the football tournament at the end of May hopefully generated funds. Um, I haven't heard confirmation that that did. I'm assuming it has, but we, we can obviously find out the exact amounts on that. Um, as will fundraising and sponsorship, which takes place throughout the year. And any other small amounts can come from the club funds. So to prevent the disposal of the old goals, the club are talking to the local primary school to see if they want to um, replace their plastic goals, although this is to be confirmed. Um, and the other set, um, the set of old goals that they've got um, will be moved to Rampton to, to support more use of their rec and provide another training area option as the club continues to expand. 
and Councillor John Lovelock is in support. So that's £2,000. Thank you. Um, before we go to the, my colleagues, um, you talk about uh, Councillor Lovelock. Uh, there are two councillors for that ward, uh, Councillor Osborne and Nicola Osborne as well. Um, do you know if she was contacted by the club or do you know if we contacted that councillor? Um, I haven't. I don't know. I don't think so. But I can get them to contact if you want to. Right. Um, uh, colleagues, I'm going to say something here. I think this is quite important. I'm a very, very strong believer in the 45 of us having a say in these grants, come what may. And I'm going to make a request, if you give me that permission as, as the committee, to Emma and the, the officer gang, that when these applications come in, if they are, if they are a shortfall in the consultation with colleagues, councillor colleagues, that they write to them and ask them for their opinion. That way we have a 45-member consultation on every single one. Would you be in agreement with that? You got that? That's a, that's a, a yes from us, Emma. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. if you wouldn't mind. Um, That's absolutely fine. Just as a, a future point, if we wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Right, again, um, over to you guys for this particular application. Okay. Uh, a number, a, great, a, a, a large number of young people are benefiting of both sexes, or all sexes, and uh, are, yeah, absolutely positive. In support, yeah. Sue, Judith, Dan, you're in the same? Sue? Oh, just going to say, I I don't think it. Um, I'm not trying to be critical, but I don't really think you need to read it to us. We can a shortened version of the summary would be. Um, but yes, I agree that it's an appropriate thing. I'll take that as an affirmation of yes on that one. Thank you, Emma. Next one. Okay. So the next one is Longstanton Grasshoppers Cricket Club. Um, established in 1999, offers cricket training and competitive matches to people aged 6 to 86, both male and female, and of all abilities. There's currently 120 members who each pay on average £50 per session. They'd like to protect the safety of other users of the recreation grounds when cricket activities are taking place. And to do this, they would like to install an extension in height to the perimeter fencing of the children's play park. And this will be through a ball stop, net and post system, as shown in the picture. Estimated costs are £3,000, um, £2,000 for materials, £1,000 for installation, and £2,000 has been requested from the community chest. They've got grants already from the um, £500 from the English, England and Wales Cricket Board, and £500 has been provided by the Parish Council. Although since making this application, the ground rent for the field has significantly increased, and this £500 now has to go towards this, um, and they are going to apply to an alternative um, grant giving body the balance of the cost of the nets. Um, they are still waiting confirmation regarding district councillor's support. Um, yeah, so £2,000 for that one. Again, this would be a classic case of both councillors for this, this ward being asked. Okay, so thank you. Um, colleagues, are we um, a yay or nay with this? It's very precise. My concern is the lack of confirmation by the district councillors. I do think they need to be to know that they need to support things like this. And I would be happier if we waited until we had their confirmation, but I agree it's a perfectly good application. As a point, sorry. Can you speak? No, Dan, you speak Dan, to Dan's next, then Judith. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just to echo uh, Sue's. Sue's argument here. I, I think to have no consultation with the sitting uh, councillors um, that needs to be rectified before this can go ahead. And just, um, I'm just wondering if there are any planning issues because those posts are very high. Is it? Are, are there any planning issues? I'm, I'm not aware. Okay, Judith. I think my point's been covered. Yeah, the same. And it's, it's not great having no representation from the district councillor. But now, are we doing that going forward or are we doing it from now? <laughs> um, it's my first time on this committee, so I'm not sure. Right. 
Um, I mean, this does bring back the Paris Council issue of whether we are something to something. I mean, we've asked Emma to, from now on, for the, for the next round, that their whole council to be contacted if they haven't written in or been contacted by the applicant. Um, if we were to approve this, can we ask Emma to write to the, the members for that ward, if you like, in retrospect? Uh, mm -hmm. If they are in approval of it, then the, the money gets awarded, if John's okay with this. If they are not in a, a approval of this, then it is deferred and comes back here for another another look at it. Is that okay? That's fair enough. Okay, lovely. If you wouldn't mind doing that, Emma, thanks. Uh, that's fine. That's um, absolutely fine. Chair, Chair, can I just uh, butt in here? It, it used to be normal practice for members to be contacted when applications were received. And I was under the impression that that was continuing, that when an application is received, then um, the local members are contacted for their support. Um, what we do, is, um, it, it's on the application form, is your district councillor in support? And what we do is before these um, the report gets written, um, we always email the applicant to say, it, it, you know, it's probably it's recommended that you do get district council support and that these are your district councillors. We provide an email address for them to contact them. So they're given an opportunity to go to them and the majority of the time they do get back to us and say, yes, they are. And they forward an email to us. So we are made aware, but there's a few cases where either they haven't got round to it or has time has elapsed and it hasn't come through yet. Hang on, John, uh, Dan. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting confused. It, have the district councillors been notified and not responded? They haven't been, so they haven't been notified. Okay, um, I think they need to be notified before any approval can be. Uh, yeah, and I have to say, Emma, that used to be the process uh, when John, certainly when John was doing this, that the local members would be contacted by the South Cam's officer just to um, just to 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 say you know this group in your ward has applied um, and and do do you support their application and I think it might be worthwhile to go back to that because I don't otherwise uh, we know what some of these groups are like you know they're very busy people sometimes and they might try and phone the local councillor up you know and then don't get a response and then they don't follow that up whereas at least the local member can't say that they were not aware of the application if we ask you know if we inform them directly that this app an application has been and then really it might be down to the local parish uh, local will counsel to contact the organisation concerned, or as I say, the organisation can contact the local um, district councillor and at least the local district councillor will know what it's about <laughs> and not okay. and not suddenly get a call out of the blue from someone who's putting in an application. So I think we, I, I would like us to go back to what we used to do uh, and that's make sure that local wall members are notified. Okay. I think that was that was the um, the um, emphasis of what we said earlier, John, was that you know we've asked Emma to do that from now on, if you like. So for the, for this this meeting, I think we're going to have to um, fly by the seat of our pants, if you wish, you know, as we've just done now. But I think from from now on in for July, it will be it will be that that way. Okay, thank you. Right, moving on. Uh, Chair, Bill. Um, Chair. Apart from anything else, Joe's uh, chair, <laughs> uh, there may be some local issue here that we are unaware of, and we could end up talking generally, not on this one. But you might actually end up supporting something that's deeply unpopular. If you're putting a you know a twenty foot fence up against somebody's garden boundary, uh, it, you know we might actually be uh, do it, doing something that's deeply unpopular. So we need to be really careful about that. And only, only by con contacting the local member could, can you ascertain that? Couldn't agree more. Right, um, Anna Braden. Uh... Thank you, thank you, Chair. Kind of you to let me speak. Um, I just wanted to clarify that when um, both of those things I think are important that the applicant makes a request to the member, but also that the officers do, and that 
please could could we ensure that the officer sends the full details of what is being applied for because then because sometimes what happens is the applicant sends an email that isn't particularly explicit about exactly what they're applying for and then as a member you're slightly unsure as to whether you do support it or not because you haven't seen the detail of what they're asking for so if the officers could send the full detail that would make members uh, better informed thank you yep. that, that's that's absolutely fine point well made thank you emma over to you again okay so that was a yes for that one was it that was camborne wasn't it okay so the next one would have been the cog uh Oh no, so that, oh, sorry, that was that was long standing, wasn't it? I think. Yes, we're on to Campbell now, aren't we? Yes. So on page 10. Um, so Camborne Lawn Tennis Club formed in 2003 provides low cost tennis for members and non members. Membership is open to all adults and children in the community and the courts and the clubhouse can be hired out by non members. They provide social tennis matches and tennis coaching. So the club would like to construct a new clubhouse, including toilets on the land adjoining the tennis courts. Um, as present, there are no facilities there um, and this would greatly improve what they can offer. The new clubhouse will include eco friendly recycling and um, recycled cladding and decking. The parish council own the venue and are supportive of the project in principle, having helped to get the project going and with obtaining planning permission. Um, they also provided funding in 2016 for the building of the new tennis courts. However, due to lack of funds, they are unable to provide funding with this project. So total project costs are £78,888.22 and £2,000 has been requested from the community chest. Um, an expression of interest application to the Amy Community Fund for £40,000 has been approved and the shortfall of £36,000 will come from the club reserves. They've also been offered a interest free loan of £30,000 from the Cambridgeshire Lawn Tennis Association. Um, Councillor Dr Shrabona Bhattachari is in support. Over to you. But again, um, before we move on and we, whether we come to whatever decision we come to on this one, Emma, there yep. are three councillors for Camborne Ward. So yep. um, we would wish all councillors to be consulted and have their two pedith Again, if they come back to the contrary of yes, yeah. if they're not supportive, then that will again be deferred. I think if we can just have that as the, the rider for all of this meeting, if you wouldn't mind. Yes. Uh, Councillor Williams. Yeah, I, I, I've got some questions about this because um, in the report, thank you, Emma, it says that the parish council own the venue. Um, so presumably the freehold of this uh, um, is is owned by the parish council. What will be the status of this um, clubhouse then? Um, will it be owned by the, um, uh, the Campbell uh, Tennis Club? And what's the lease that the tennis club has uh, on on this? Uh, has it got a long lease? Um, has it got a lease that's only a few years and, and will need to be renewed? Um, because we could be supporting the parish, or sorry, it's not a parish council, it's a town council. We could be supporting the town council of Campbell in providing um, this facility um, by a back door, really. And so I, I would want to understand the relationship of the tennis club to the town council and why is it the town council submitted the planning application? It it it, it makes me suspicious. And um, I yes, I would like to know who's going to own this building and for how long um, before I, I I I make a decision on this because um, yep. you know I I I have a feeling that this is a a, a town council project that they've got the uh, tennis club to to um, to look for funding for. Um, so, yeah, I, I need some questions answered before I would uh, agree to this. Yep. Uh, Bill. I, I agree with John. I think we should defer it. So. No, I agree with John. We, we need to be to know where we stand with this. No, I, I think it's uh, entirely appropriate to know who actually owns the building. 
Um, I'm also interested to know, is it a clubhouse in the sense of uh, a social clubhouse or is it purely for accessing the tennis courts? Um, that would be useful to know. Okay, colleagues, I think I've got the flavour of the, the meeting room, which is defer um, until Emma's had a chance and offices to go back and ask the, the salient questions and get answers from the, the applicant. Thank you, Emma. Awesome. Over okay. to you again. So we're going to Miss Cogwheel and we're going to go down to page 16, which is Sawson Youth Drama Limited. So they started in 1969, provides um, young people aged 11 to 18 of all abilities with skills to develop drama, dance and music. There are no auditions needed to join and young people can also learn production and direction skills. The group is run by volunteers and room hire is provided for free at the Marvin Centre at Sawston Village College. The only funding that they get um, comes from subscriptions and the profits made from their productions. Um, those that attend are from Sawston and the surrounding parishes of Stapleford, Shelford, Whittlesford, Duxford, Eggleton, Harston and Newton. Um, and pre-COVID, 156 young people per week benefited with help of 23 volunteers. And currently there are 60 young people attending, each paying £100 per year to cover all the costs needed to put on a musical. Um, so the drama club, not the college, are responsible for the actual lights. Um, and over time, many of these lights have broken due to their age. And what they're wanting is six LED lights, the eco, obviously, alternative. And um, the total cost for this is 2,290, including VAT. Um, they're requesting £2,000 from the community chest. Um, and they are ring fencing funds um, from the 2023 productions to cover the shortfalls. Um, also, as the group are unable to claim VAT. We've got um, Councillor Libby Earl in support. Um, and we've had a note here that um, unfortunately this didn't make the parish council agenda on the 14th of June. Um, but the clerk has stated that the chair and the vice chair of the parish council are fully supportive um, of the application. Um, the parish council has also given them grants in the past, for example, a £728 COVID grant in August 2020. And the money was used to cover the direct out of pocket costs incurred during the lockdown. So this is £2,000. Thank you, Emma. Um, it's also got uh, Councillor Milnes was um, contacted and he's, he's listed as having... Yes, he, yes he's in support, uh, yes. ...supported my this, that's, that's great. Um, now, I think you both, all of you, or the older hands, know that I am part of the Melbourne Amateur Dramatic Society, so I know I don't look like a thespian, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm behind the scenes. So I actually know the benefits, absolutely brilliant benefit of good lighting because I have to, I have to have good lighting myself. So I'm over to you guys. Who would like to speak? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to ask the, the question uh, about the parish council support and that's been answered. So I would be very happy to support this. So, I think it ticks all the boxes. Okay. Uh, Bill, Bill uh, Dan, yeah. Judith. That's, a, that's an answer. Yes, from us, please, Emma. Fantastic. Brilliant. OK, so um, OK, so page 17. This is the Girton um, Cottontails preschool. Now, I've had an email on the 14th of this month um, from the applicant saying that um, due to sickness, they have not had a chance to ask for support from the parish council and um, also the district councillors. And they've asked if we can defer until July in order to get this information. Um, I've provided some information, but um, I'll leave that to you to decide whether you know you want to go with what you know read what they've said. You know, if you want to make a decision today or tell me to defer, it's absolutely fine too. Um, but this is what they've asked for. Bill, I, I can run it. I can run through the application if you wanted me to. Can I? Can yes, I, I suggest that I, I, I would be happy to support this. Can I suggest that we put it to John that he accepts it if we get a satisfactory response? To the to Emma's uh, to Emma's questions. I I I have an issue with this because um, this is a physical asset that's going to benefit the Girton Glebe School. Um, you know they use the Girton Glebe School. Presumably that's the the um, they rent um, space from the school, and that they're asking us to fund 
them putting up an undercover area. Um, so what's going to be used? Well, who's going to be used? Is it going to be exclusive for them? And um, who who's going to own it at the end of the day? It sounds to me like um, we've got another case where um, the asset is owned by a third party who will benefit from our um, and of course, I'm not sure what the Girton Glebe School is. If it is, is it a maintained school? Um, if it is a maintained school, then we can't fund that work. Okay. I so I need a bit. I need problem. some more information on this, Emma, okay. please. Um, I, 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 with, in respect to the actual, is it, is it exclusive to the preschool? I should imagine it was. It would be if it's running from a school. They wouldn't be packing it into pack away setting, so that would be dedicated purely to them for their use. But I understand what you're saying about the um, who owns it ultimately. So yes, I can go and ask that. It will okay. definitely be segregated because of the age of the children. Uh, Melbourne's preschools are all segregated by fairly serious fencing to keep the two apart, and that's on a primary school site as well. So. Uh, Judith. I was just thinking there wasn't really enough information here and the applicants also asked to defer, but so why don't we defer until July? Yeah. Yeah, if we could, that'd be great. Yep, we'll do that then. Yep. Okay. Okay. I guess that's sorry, can I just can I, sorry, can I just say that my support for that was on the assumption that it was for exclusive use, so all right. Yep. Absolutely. OK, so on to page 18, Cambridge Sports Lakes Trust, um, which was formed in 1992 and manages Milton Country Park. It is committed to providing opportunities for everyone in South Cambridgeshire to access the outdoor sport, recreation and education for their physical and mental well-being. Wild Minds is a project created by Cambridge Sports Lakes Trust in partnership with the council and it provides outdoor activities to young people aged 14 to 17 who are struggling with their mental health. The project aims to inspire young people to access outdoors for their well-being and to provide positive supported experiences that will help throughout their lives. Referrals accepted from a GP or United, which is a specialist staff team from Cambridge and Peterborough NHS Foundation Trust, um, or by self-referral. And this application is for more kit for the Wild Mind sessions, such as knives, gloves, um, drills, cordage, um, bug pots. Um, and also they would like bench seating. Total project costs are £1,106.19, including VAT. Um, and this provides a true forest school experience. Um, the Trust have a partial recovery um, agreement for VAT, which means they can reclaim 66% of the total costs. The total without VAT plus non-recoverable VAT is £960.17, all of which has been requested through the community chest and Councillor Paul Bearpock is in support. Thank you. Right, the question begs um, before I move on. Anna, are you here to talk about this one? Yes, please, Chair. Right, OK. So you were obviously told or you've been contacted about this. Have you been contacted, Judith? Um, yeah. yeah, I was contacted and at the time I, saw, I was writing my email and I thought, oh, am I allowed to do this? <laughs> and I, I'll get in touch to check. I'm afraid I dropped that ball. But I am completely in support of it, and in future I will always reply to the email so that you have the full kind of compliment, as I'm sure Hannah will. <laughs> so yes, I support it. And apologies for not having written beforehand. To be perfectly honest, it was an easy mistake to make because you're going to be part of this committee, which you would have thought then you would have come and spoken about it. So I completely agree, I understand it completely. There's not a problem at all. Um, uh, Councillor Bradham, over to you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm sure I received an email, but I, I expect I accidentally overlooked it, for which I apologise. But um, so I'd just like to say that, that bear in mind the Cambridge Sport Lakes Trust is a charity, um, uh, but they have set up all sorts of things at uh, Milton Country Park. And we've seen um, how Wild Minds benefits young people. And indeed, in my capacity as a county councillor, you know, I I'm very much aware of how often children who find it difficult to learn in a classroom setting 
or that challenges their behaviour, actually putting them into a, an outdoor setting like this really enables them to gain all sorts of other skills um, around resilience mm -hmm. and being resourceful and coping and independence. And so I absolutely thoroughly support um, this. And as you can see, um, they they have asked for monies for you know tools and equipment that make this whole thing possible. So I'm fully in support of this and um, you know commend it to you as a committee. Thank you, Anna. Colleagues? Uh, um, Chair, can I? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, go on then, John. Uh, OK. Um, Emma, do you know if we um, financially support the Wild Minds um, scheme uh, from uh, other sources? Catherine's probably the best one to answer that because, um, <laughs> Catherine, are you there? You might be able to answer that one better than me. <laughs> I'm assuming so. <laughs> yes, we do. We support it by certainly through staff time as well, by coordinating um, through Leslie McFarlane and Ben Truitt. Um, okay. I mean, I yeah. don't have an objection to this, but this needs to be taken into account in our total funding for the Wild Mind scheme. Um, and it would suggest to me that, um, you know, this ought to have been funded from our contribution to the scheme rather than through the community fund. And I wonder, could you have a look at that rather than deplete our community fund, whether this ought to be paid for um, from the uh, Wild Minds project. I think probably the reason it hasn't been is because we've what we've tried to do in terms of our contribution to each venue that we host the scheme at is is offer the same thing to be consistent from our perspective. This is equipment that each venue might need to run the scheme and they run it slightly differently because their venues are different. So it runs at the Milton Country Park, but it also runs at Wandlebury. And the, the the scheme is slightly different in each case because okay, of the nature of the venue. So I think okay. that's why. Okay, because um, obviously, that. if we give money to um, um, Sports Late for Milton Park, um, we could have one of coming to us asking for money for equipment to run the scheme there. And this really needs to be taken in in the whole when we're considering, you know, the Wild Mind scheme. Um, and I would have thought things like that. Perhaps uh, for next year, we need to sit down with the organisers and actually decide what they actually need to run the scheme in the different venues, rather than have that money coming out of the community chess pot. Um, but I mean, I'm 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 okay with this for this year. But I think in future, because we're not we're not look we we haven't then got the true cost. Of running the wild mind scheme if they're coming to the community chest for for money as well as getting uh, a subsidy or funding from uh from south cams via other means we don't know the total cost then of the of the wild mines uh scheme uh that you know but uh, I suspect that um, I'd like to know what they're doing at Wandlebury, for example, because they haven't come to us asking for this equipment. No, um, we, can, we can get details so, of each one. Yeah, That's if you fine. could. The, but I'm happy to. I'm happy to agree to be, this, but I think yeah. we need to we need to sit down with the with the well, you know, um, and and fully cost what the Wild Mines scheme is, you know. It, what is costing South Cams um, rather than have people coming getting money from different pots of the of the council because otherwise you know we we I, I think that this ought to be funded by the wild mind scheme uh, budget not from community chest um, because obviously taking this from community chest means that someone else won't have that money to do another project in the community okay that's I, that's that's I've said my piece. <laughs> OK, thank you, John. Well, the, um, the officers faces say it all. They're going to go away and have a think <laughs> and have a good look. Right. Uh, Judith, you want to talk? Um, something else I wanted to add to what Catherine has said. Um, I, I completely take John's point about if it's been sourced, funded from elsewhere, we need to know what we're spending 
and how and where and somebody else might miss out. Um, and also this is the first year, so I presume there might be slight sort of feeling away to know actually how much um, a scheme like this helping mental health would help. Um, I just wanted to add, because I think this is important, that Wandlebury caters for a different age group from 11 to 13 year olds. So again, there could be just different needs and different, I'm not an expert in this, but different equipment or different things which are needed, bearing in mind um, the different ages, its services. Thank you, Jeff. That's, that's actually a really good point, John, uh, and obviously Catherine. And when you look at the um, the list of some of the things here, for the younger group, they probably wouldn't be using them. You know, like bow saws and uh, everyone knows what else. Anyway, um, we, you've asked you've asked the um, the question, so officers could work their magic if that's okay. But um, what would you like to do? I mean, in principle. Would we like to approve this with the with the answers coming back to us and the officer a decision to delegate that, that answer? John? Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm, I, as I said, I'm quite happy to uh, uh, agree to this. I just need to make sure that, you know, taking wild minds forward in future, that the total cost of providing that scheme should be, you know, taken into account and in one budget rather than have them come to um, the community budget um, and using funds that you know are, are there for you know local community projects rather than this which is a council um, council wide funded project okay um, thank you okay right okay I'm getting nods all around yep so we're uh, we're in agreement then that they say yes OK, lovely. I'll try and um, crack on quite quickly. Um, so page 19, we've got the Papworth Team Ministry. Um, they provide Christian worship and practical support for villages. Um, they have um, support the elderly in 15 local villages from Papworth, Everard and surrounding villages. Um, currently around 340 members. Um, and um, the churches and local surgeries are invited to recommend people. Self-referrals also encouraged. And what they'd like to do um, is have a summer holiday club in August, which takes place in Papua Village Hall. Um, this is a lonely time of year for some people um, with families away. Um, and what they have is volunteers that ensure guests have a, a memorable and happy time with the opportunity to try some new skills and build friendships. And it's a three day holiday programme, which includes activities, talks and entertainment. Um, two course lunch and transport is also included. I won't run through all that long list there because I know we're short for time. Um, so £300 has been funded from the Samuel Franklin Trust and £200 from the Papworth Parish Council. Um, and it's anticipated that around £1,200 will be raised in guest fees. And um, there's going to be a raffle, bring and buy stalls and secondhand book stalls. Um, and um, that will cover the shortfalls. Councillor Mark Howell is in support and they would like £500 from the community chest. From the total project cost of two thousand four hundred and forty-five. Thank you, Emma. Again, uh, Councillor Sanford is the other uh, colleague in that that ward, so I think he could perhaps be appraised and get his support. Um, Sue, I think I probably have to declare an interest as I am a member of Lowood Parish Church, and I know this group, and I think maybe I'll shut up. Well, actually, I'd like to ask you a question, if I may, uh, Sue. Um, is that OK, if you don't mind answering? Um, the application itself, to me, looks really straightforward. And as you know, we, we tend not to, to fund places of worship and what have you. But this does not give the implication of worship. It gives the, the implication of community support, which we are very much, as a group, in support of. Could I just confirm with you, is that your belief? as, a, as a, a member of this particular organisation, so to speak, um, that this is what this would be, i.e. community-based rather than um, a church-based thing? I, I believe it is community-based, but that's one of the reasons I'm shutting up, if you see what I mean, because I feel slightly conflicted 
in that this is a church event and therefore I am not absolutely sure that it is. It falls within our remit. Then I shan't press you anymore and thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, uh, my concern was that this was was more a, a, a you know a, ch a church event, a church thing, um, and a relatively closed membership. So, um, I, I I'm uncomfortable with it, to be honest. I would like to challenge the. Um, uh, what, do you, what did you call the membership? What was it you said the membership? There's 340 members. That's a lot of people in a lot of villages. So, there you go. Judith? Um, again, if we could have a bit more detail, because I do know that, I mean, this is very anecdotal, but summer holiday clubs are run by churches just because they run them, but they welcome people like, there's often one in Water Beach run by the Baptist Church, but it's advertised, you know, for anyone to to turn up, um, you know, of a certain age for children. So it would be kind of quite good to know that um, that it isn't a closed audience and that you don't have to be, um, you know, a member of that congregation. Thank you, Dan. Um, I'm not seeing anything here that's suggesting that uh, there is some sort of uh, prerequisite or pre-requirement. Um, to attend these, and I, I think that we're in a real, um, we're in quite dangerous ground, if we, given how many uh, community projects, um, mum and baby groups, uh, etc., are hosted by uh, and run by church groups. So I think that um, I, 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 I don't think that should, I don't think that should count against them. Um, it, perhaps it was not the right way to start the application, but um, I, I don't think that should be a bar to them getting the support if, you know, 300, as you said, Joe, 350 people is a lot of people. Can I, John? Can I come in here? I, the, the, I, had, a, I had a concern about this when, in the first paragraph when it talked about members and they currently have 340 members, and that gave the impression that this is purely for uh, church members. Um, and that, that's what it said to me that, you know, they have 340 members in those various um, villages. Um, and obviously using the term members means that the members of the church. Uh, but then it goes, the second paragraph then goes on to talk about churches, again, but local surgeries, presumably that means GPs. Uh, can recommend people. So that, in a way, sort of suggested to me that this is open to non-members of the church. But it's a bit unfortunate that that didn't come across very well in their application. And it would be interesting to know, um, you know, their outreach, how many potential people does this reach? And what are the numbers of people? Because it's obviously a summer holiday club that they've done before, and it would be useful to know how many non-church members attend. And I think that would then give us the confidence of, of agreeing to this if we found that, yes, you know, um, possible that, that 50 50 or more than 50 percent or even if it's as low as you know one in five are non-church members at least it would indicate that it's open to the whole community and not just those 340 members um, because i say the second paragraph suggests that it is open to non-church members but it's not fully explained would you also welcome John uh, basically a, a one one line statement that says this is open to anybody? Um, well, obviously, given that it's, there is a limit to this, they're obviously trying to reach certain groups and certain people. Um, so it's not open to everybody, and I fully understand that. But it, at least we 
would want to be uh, reassured that it is reaching the people that it's designed to reach and that everybody in the community who meets that criteria is able to attend uh, and that it's just not limited to those senior citizens, um, for example, who are members of the church. Because obviously, if that was the case, then it would not be within our criteria. Okay, thank you. John, Dan? Yeah, I, I agree with John um, about this case in particular. And I just wonder about raising the general point that perhaps in the uh, guidance to um, prospective applicants, uh, whether a specific comment couldn't be made about church, two church groups and religious organisations to say, please make sure to word your application in such a way that we can avoid this uncertainty in future. Absolutely, yes. OK, so based on, on the questions that John has raised and, and others, um, the application is for £500, so it's uh, basically 20% of what the actual cost is going to be. Um, if those questions, John, come back with um, an affirmative to what we're actually looking for, shall we leave this as an officer delegation again? Yes, yeah, yeah I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that, is that agreement with everybody? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Right, so... Um, on to page 21. So we're now on to the biodiversity grants um, part of the um, community chest. Um, I've spoke, I've been in contact with John Cornell, the natural environment team leader, and Siobhan Mellon from the climate environment team, who've reviewed these proje um, projects and they're happy that all three projects would make a useful contribution to our aspiration to double nature in South Cambridgeshire. So on to the first one, which is Shepworth Parish Council. Um, I'll try and keep it really short again. They would like to create an orchid garden. Um, this um, in celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. The aim is to purchase 50 indigenous orchid um, plug plants um, to add to an existing area of wildflower meadows in the heart of the village. Um, and that will be around a tree planted in 1953 to celebrate the Queen's coronation. Um, they're using experts from an or um, Beaudley Orchids and um, they've got professionals and professional gardeners as well um, to help out with the planting and maintenance. Um, the village website will be used to catalogue orchids um, development as well as to promote it as an educational tool and they are asking for um, including a plaque and delivery £776.99 of which £426.99 has been requested from the community chest. The parish council will provide £350 and cover any overruns should they occur. Um, Councillor Joe Hales, you're in support as is Councillor Sally Ann Hart. Thank you Emma. Right now this one is a slightly a slight anomaly as it was I think it missed and I, perhaps Emma can clarify which way around this but it it was inadvertently put in the wrong category prior it, it, it basically arrived after the um the application yeah. for but the Jubilee some... but because it's um it, it fits into the category of biodiversity yeah. um we, we we thought it was good to include um still because it's obviously it's a biodiversity project and there was sufficient funds um presently in there yeah so i'll leave I that as a decision they were, they were hoping for it to have come in the last round with the queen's jubilee for obvious reasons but either way yeah. it's academic um it's here now um, and just to say that they've planted the garden, they've used parish council funds, if you like, in lieu of this, this grant coming forward. So um, I'm hopeful that my colleagues will be generous, including the lead member for finance, um, because it looks absolutely stunning. And some of it is already coming out in bloom as we speak. So over to you, gang. It just I'm always really generous. Good, really yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Really, it looks really good to me and really imaginative and different and yet still continuing that sort of marking tradition, but in a really biodiverse way. It looks, yeah, I'm really impressed by it. Superb. Superb. Yeah. So, Dan? Yeah, I've already said that. 
And I heard Bill say, uh, uh, Bill, I uh, heard John say earlier that he's always supportive. So that's 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 a good news. So we have a we have a unanimous Emma. Thank you. Lovely, brilliant. Okay, so page twenty two, we've got Duxford Community Centre events. Um, it's the committee for Duxford Community Centre. Um, the committee, which consists of nine members, is responsible for all activities relating to the events in the community centre or on the grounds of the recreation ground. They would like to plant an oak tree in the grounds, um, again, um, commemorating the Platinum Jubilee. Um, the oak tree is £403, the plaque is £125 and total cost is £528, all being requested from the community chest. Um, and planting will take place in October because um, that's a better time to obviously plant trees. Um, they might, if it is in a pot, they might, um, one of the parish councillors has volunteered to keep it in a pot if necessary. If they need to order it sooner um, and it will be maintained by an external provider and members of the council and councillor Peter MacDonald is in favour. Thank you. Comments, colleagues? Dan? Um. I'm just wondering how an oak tree costs £403. Is it a particularly old and established tree? Uh, is it a very new sapling tree? Um, that's the bit that I'm confused about. How have they, how have they got a £403 oak tree? I know from experience, um, we, we planted a magnolia um, at the council um, a couple of years ago now coming up. And I think that that was something in the region of three or four hundred pounds. I think some of the established trees do do cost a little bit more. Um, so, so they wanted to get a good established oak tree so that it would look good. But um, yeah, <laughs> I can't really provide much more than that. I can find out the exact um, sort of sizings if need be. I, I, I absolutely agree with you, Emma, because um, a box standard birch tree silver birch which is something in the region of 10 feet will cost you getting on for 300 quid now so it's the, it's the length of time that the nurseries hold the trees and, and grow them as a, like a stock item thank you um councillor bradman thank you chair um i just wanted to point out that a number of trees including the tree that uh first to our councillor and Chairman Douglas de Lacey and I planted is not looking in the best of health. And what I would say is that if the temptation is for people to want to plant a bigger tree because it looks more um, impactful when it's planted. But two things. One is, can I suggest they consider planting a smaller tree because it's more likely to establish? In other words, the tree will not be so big that it's coping with a small root ball for so long. But also, can I just ask that they consider planting a an irrigation ring with the tree when they plant it, which can then be used to plant to water the tree as it establishes, because otherwise the chances of it surviving are slim. Yeah. It's really hard to maintain a tree early on without that kind of irrigation ring, which you put in the planting hole at the time you plant the tree. And then it has an extension through which you then water the tree and you get a team of volunteers to water it for a year. <laughs> so can I just suggest that addition to the um, to make sure that their tree flourishes? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, I, th I think um, Anna's got it um, exactly right. Um, the the application, I don't think, is complete in its current status because it's not discussing long term uh, care of the tree while it establishes. Um, and I just think that, in particular, spending one hundred twenty five pounds on a plaque for a tree that might not make it um, might be. A little bit unfortunate. So, um, I would. I, I, I have no objection to this in principle, other than um, I don't think the tree size is quite right, and I'm not seeing a long-term care plan, which would be the thing that put me into the yes camp. Much as I hate tree guards, I think young trees do need protection from young boys as well as Monk Jack and a few other odds and bobs. So I think, the, I hope 
that the 403 will also include um, some sort of protection. Okay, Emma, you got some questions there. Um, yeah. I think if the if the watering options aren't included and a tree guard isn't isn't included, yeah. um, perhaps the applicant might look at a slightly smaller tree, which obviously falls into what Councillor Bradley and, and Lentor have just said with regards yeah. to establishing and what have you. But it then also gives them the option to provide watering and guarding. So would you be prepared to just ask those questions if they could come down in height a little bit? Of, uh, yes. I mean, I was looking on the internet while you were speaking and others were talking, uh, um, a six to eight centimetre girth or circumference of a oak tree is about 250 quid. So they might be going for a big tree or they've already got stuff included in this 403. We'd just like some confirmation. If that comes back as an affirmative, as with all others, uh, I would argue, I'm looking around the room here, that we're looking uh, for officer officer defer, uh, officer approval, so to speak, if they come back with the right answers. You know, if you don't want to. No. Hold on. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. I, I, I want to see a long-term community care plan in place before awarding the money. Judith. Um, also, to follow up on that, there is time, isn't there, for this to come back with a little bit more detail on what they're going to do, especially then that might remove the problem of having to store it until October. Yeah. Okay, Emma, we have a slightly oh. different change of plan. Sure. <laughs> um, Sorry. Could I think I? we're looking to defer this. I think I'm looking around the room looking to defer. Sure. Yeah. Uh, not, not the moment, Councillor Bradman. Right. Um, Emma, so yeah. we're going to defer. Would you mind going back to the applicant and asking the questions that have been raised at the moment, and especially about the long-term maintenance of the tree for at least, as Councillor Bradman said, a year's worth of watering and what have you, to give yeah. it that kickstart of survival? Okay. And then, and then bring it back to July, is that? And then so, that could come back to the next the next uh, yeah. meeting, if that's okay yeah. with everybody, yeah? Um, yeah. One, one other point. Um, I also, just to follow up on what Joe said, I, I don't really see the point in buying the tree immediately and then having it cared for in somebody's garden rather than waiting and having it cared for at the nursery by people who presumably know how to care for trees on a daily professional basis. Okay, I think we've got the deferment on that one. Next one, please. Okay, so the next one is page 23, which is Great and Little Everson Allotments. Um, started in 1922, belongs to the National Society of Allotment and Leisure Gardens. Gardeners. Um, they have 14 plots and tenants and members maintain their plot as an allotment garden growing many, um, sorry, allotment garden growing mainly fake fruit and vegetables for other members and their families. Membership is £25 per year. Um, the members of the society support local wildlife and have recently constructed bug hotels, bird boxes and log piles. Allotments are one third woodland and are protected for wildlife. And what they'd like to do is a pond restoration project to further attract wildlife and biodiversity. Um, you can see the picture of the existing pond. Um, so obviously, the, the, you know, obviously you can see that it needs to be revamped and um, Total project costs are £1,941, all of which are being requested from the community chest. I won't go into all those aquatic plants and everything, but you can see them listed there. Um, they don't have enough funding to cover the project because um, they want to keep the subscriptions quite low. Um, the village community is very supportive and they've got a willing team of volunteers waiting to do all the work, manual work. Um, they've got advice from the Wildlife Trust, um, which is something that Siobhan is really pleased to see. Um, to ensure the pond is maintained, um, they've got to do um, remove the sediment from the pond, um, and that will be an annual maintenance activity. And they've got all that lined up. They've got people to sort of do all of that, and they've got seasonal lists of jobs as well. Um, there's going to be a lot of publicity around this as well, including plaques, Facebook pages, social media. 
Um, like I said, Siobhan um, was very pleased to see the fact that the Wildlife Trust are, are um, involved and um, John Cornell, our um, um, planning um, manager um, officer, has basically said that ponds are a habitat, habitat that we need more of. So he's he's very much in support as well. That's £1,941 for all of the project costs. Thank you. And just before we go to the members, there was um, in a conversation with one of the parish councillors at Melbourne this week who was talking about um, a national funding stream for the upkeep and re reponding of old ponds, and it's paid in 100%. Um, it may be prudent for this particular group to contact Melbourne Parish Council and speak to the clerk and ask for details of that because there, there's an you know there's a potential that they're about to get the whole lot funded. Okay. Um, can I also ask what the P means? The N is obvious, but you've got P. Is that provisional? On the uh, application. Pending. Oh, sorry, pending. Yes. Pending. Yes, that's pending. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So have we, <laughs> as uh, Councillor Van der Weyer, not been contacted? Is um, it? We're still waiting. Yeah, we're still waiting on those ones. Um, they have been contacted to ask them. I'd, I'm not sure if that's actually the um, district councillors not responding or if it's the actual um, applicant. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I can get them to chase that Please. as well. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, colleagues, Dan. Um, yeah, I think again this this general principle that it would be good to notify um, councillors of applications made uh, in their patch uh, in advance of meetings. That way, we can say that they have definitely been informed. My question is: if they're expanding the pond fifteen meters by fifteen meters, what provision have they got to make sure that little ones in particular are safe? And being alerted that there is now a water hazard. Um, has there been, I, I, you know, it's awful that we have to do this, but, you know, we do have to do this. Um, I think about the uh, lakes and things around in North Stowe that have rubber rings and all the rest of it and life preservers. Um, has there been a health and safety assessment carried out here? Um, if not, there needs to be one. That's actually a really good point. It's a metre deep. I need mean, like, you can drown in an inch, but a metre is a lot is a lot of water. In actual fact, working on the basis of ponds, fifteen by fifteen and a metre deep, you're looking at well over ten thousand litres. Yep. That's, that's a shed load of water. So yes. Um water shed load. We, has anyone else got any comments on this before I say what I was about to say? I would, I would actually say this is actually a, a, a big issue on this one because we are going to be funding something which has a potential hazard. So I think in, in answer to, to Dan's point that I would like to defer this with the information to come back. Uh, allotments are open to all, so there are going to be children on site. They're actively encouraged to come to allotments. So um, we don't need any accidents. And we also need to know how the pond is going to be uh, fenced off, so to speak, at night yep. when other people might go through and fall in it. So I think this is this is actually quite critical. It's a, it's a very well-raised well point. Thanks. So I, that's what I would like to do if, if everyone's in agreement is to defer this. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a deferred piece for those uh, points to be made, Emma. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay, so that leads me on to the deferred grants. We've got two deferred grants, um, page 25. <clears throat> the first one is the Water Beach Parish Council one. This is, if you remember, um, from April's Grants Advisory Committee, um, where we wanted in Chittering to um, have an upgrade of the play park. I won't go into all the details because I know we're pushed for time. Um, but you can see that in the application. Um, basically, it was pending confirmation of the number of the children who will benefit from the play equipment, both now and in the future, and further information on the maintenance measures currently in place for the equipment. Now, I've got in contact um, 
and I've been told that Chittering is fairly isolated from the rest of the parish. It consists of 62 properties plus a touring caravan park, 10 primary school aged children aged um, and nine secondary school aged um, children, uh, plus a lot of visiting grandchildren whose parents enjoy the park as children will benefit from this. Um, it's the only facility for the children and parents to meet up and for them to invite their friends over to play. Parish Council have confirmed that they are responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of the area and the equipment and the park has been closed for some time awaiting the refurbishments um, and a local resident has worked really hard in getting the refurbishments assessed and obtaining quotes for the work so hopefully those um, that answer satisfies um, the reasons it was deferred for so um, they were asking for £2,000 and the total project cost was £32,261.10. Thank you, Emma. Uh, Councillor Bradman, because you're here, I'll take you're going to speak on this one. Yes, please, if I may. Do, is that now? Yes, please. Lovely. OK, thank you. So um, this has taken a long time to gather the funding. Uh, anyone who's tried to refurbish or even build a play park knows how long it takes to get the funding together for these things. Um, you'll see this um, project has the support of the parish council and uh, they are supporting it financially as well. The reason this is so important is that Chittering is really very isolated from the rest of the uh, parish. It's a, it's a hamlet on its own and you can only get to other villages by car. So this is um, really important that the children in this village do have somewhere to play. And I can only speak as highly as possible about the woman who has spearheaded this um, project she has worked so hard to get the funding together and i i just um it's so important the play park's been out of action for a long time now while they've been getting quotes for repairs and refurbishment so i just strongly recommend it uh, as does my colleague um paul bear park and he's also helped you know supported them too so i just strongly wish that we can support this Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Redmond. Um, Judith. Um, as do I, strongly support it. And I'm afraid this must have been an email I missed. Um, so, um, but I am familiar with it from parish council meetings, from Janet Cornwell coming to them to address and um, really kind of get this project properly re-established and up and running, as I think um, Councillor Bradham's already said, and they're almost there with the funding. Thank you. As I said before, please don't beat yourself up about the, the anomaly, although we will give all councillors who haven't been um, emailing in 100 lines, so as to do their bits and bobs. <laughs> right, uh, comments, colleagues? I'm happy to give this uh, as seal of approval, I just think it's a shame that the parish council let it get into such a dilapidated state in the first place. Anybody else? Bill, that's my that's my feelings too. You know how has, how has it got to this? But uh, I, I I think it'd be churlish not to support it. I mean, we did ask it to be deferred for information to come back, and it has come back in volumes. Uh, Dan, you got any comments? Um, yeah, can can we remind ourselves why we deferred this? We deferred it because this is a, this is uh, a play area and equipment owned by the parish council, and Water Beach is not a small parish council. In fact, it's um, will we'll soon become a town council in future, presumably. And the reason we were concerned about this is because we don't fund parish councils and we don't fund parish council assets because parish councils can raise a precept. So I'm still not happy that we are being asked to subsidise a parish council asset, uh, which I mean, the parish councils agreed to budgeted 14,000. Great, very pleased to see that. But it should be budgeting 16,000. Uh, I cannot see why. I still don't understand. I've read this and I cannot see, in fact, someone can explain why we should be funding 
the improvement of a parish council asset when the parish council can raise its precept to do that. John, uh, take your point. Just a question for Emma. The criteria with parish councils where they have, is it 150? It's 160. 60 or um, less. But it's, um, it's exempt from that because it's um, where a parish council, a large parish council has multiple settlements. They're classed as a small parish council. So you, you would, that settlement would be, um, it, it could be included. So um, that's in the criteria. I think I think that would okay work. if it's in the criteria then fine yeah but but I think we need to make the point that the only reason we are funding this is because of the special nature of chit chittering and um you know it's not because we have we are funding Walter Beach Parish Council in 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 improving an asset uh, it's only been done because um you know this particular hamlet is is considered to be separate, physically separate from Walter Beach. Thank you, John. Judith. Just supporting that in the point that um, John Williams has made and Anna Bradman, um, it is really quite isolated. And if there were, and we're hoping there will be a connection which isn't a car, like um, a path to there in the future, we hope that will happen. I wouldn't feel happy about doing that, but because um, the residents there can't access anything else other than in a car, it seems like, you know, that isolation element and its small nature of the hamlet um, is a stronger argument. Thank you. Okay, colleagues, um, John has indicated that obviously with the criteria held for the 160 or less, it does qualify. And Emma has explained that as well. So are we in support? Yeah, absolutely. That's a yes. Thank yeah. you, John. Okay. Right. So on to the last application you'll be pleased to hear. On page 27, we have Carlton Parish Council. Um, this is another deferment from March's Grants Advisory Committee. Um, Basically, this is for litter bag, um, litter picking equipment. Um, the application was deferred pending a review of the cost of the equipment and consideration given to borrowing the equipment from the council on a long term basis. So I've been in contact with the shared waste team and they said, unfortunately, long term loan of litter picking equipment is difficult um, with so many villages in the district. And there's just not enough equipment to go round. Um, and the applicant has said that they want good quality products because they're out all the time and they've had ones before that don't even last a year. Um, they've I've given them the um, supplier used by the shared waste team um, and they've done a revised quote um, for the same things and they've come in slightly, well, about £16 cheaper, I think it is. Um, so that's hopefully that will satisfy the questions that were asked at the last committee meeting. Thank you, Emma Bill. Uh, yeah, um, I know a little bit about uh, the rubbish friends. Um, I've actually been litter picking with them, and they are a very active group. I mean, they, they're out a heck of a lot. Uh, it's the sort of kind of group that we really should be encouraging if we can. You know, it's not like they're going to get this equipment and then stick it in a cupboard and not use it for months. They're going to be using it. So um, I would be, in, in for that reason, I, I, would be, I would be supportive. Thank you. Anybody else? Colleagues, no? Shall we take this as an um, affirmative? Yeah, so that's a support. Again, thank you very much. That, that's you done on that, Emma, isn't it? Okay, I think it is, yes. Thank you very much indeed for your, your help and... and uh, and work on this. It's been much appreciated as always. Um, so if you want to stay for the rest and enjoy the meeting, it's just to sit back and then kick your shoes off. Right. Thank you. I think Thank I'll you go. very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bye -bye. Right, ch Chair, before you proceed, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go, I've got to go okay. and get my car for its MOT. So um, obviously I'll, I'll take note of anything that the officers uh, recall from, from the next two items, but um, um, sorry, but I have to. I have to go. It's uh, 
didn't expect this meeting to be going on well, so long. I'd just like to, uh, yeah. to thank you for your continuing generosity, as always. Thank you very much indeed as the lead member for finance. Thanks, John. And Chair, uh, I'd just like to say thank you for the, the grants that you've given, and I'll leave now as well. Thank you, Anna. Cheers. Yeah, okay. okay. So, I, I have read these reports, so um, I've, I've, I've shared my views with the officers. So um, um, anyway, I'd be interested to hear any comments you have on them. Okay. See you all. Bye. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Um, just been reminded, uh, do we need a quick comfort break or anything? Are we okay to crack on? Okay, so before we go to agenda item five, so before we go to agenda item five, obviously I have to leave for agenda item five. Dan is going to take over the chair. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Just to just to advise colleagues that agenda items five, six, and seven are essentially for us to note. Okay, now there will be things that obviously you've read the documents, you may have ideas and what have you, whereas we're going to be going, as we move forward, we might be some slight changes and tweaks to how we do these service grants and other bits and pieces. Could I request, through Dan, because I'm not going to be here, that we don't go into the detail now because there is no point, um, but we make a note of those and we email those comments and thoughts to both, or to John Williams, lead member for finance, Cecilia, Murphy Rhodes as the lead member, and Catherine Hawkes as the other member of that team, I believe, Cecilia, yeah? So the three, those three people, and we can be as, as extensive as we like because we have a workshop coming up at the back end of July, um, date to be arranged at the moment, um, but that's where we will be then going into the great detail. So I'm about to vacate the chamber and hand over to Dan, and thank you, Dan. Okay, so, this is, uh, this is the Mobile Warden Scheme Grants End of Year Progress Report, yes. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Celia on the um, Zoomy thing. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, so this is a, a summary report at the end of this year, and we are part way through the year for there are, as you will see from the paper, there's two different stages of um, this particular of mobile warden schemes. Um, so I'll just summarise that quickly. Um, probably the easiest thing to explain is that in the appendix, as you will have seen, there are uh, two blocks of schemes running. There's the existing schemes, which are a mixture of being run by Age UK and independent schemes. And um, there's 11 of those uh, which were gone through in detail in the appendix and with that we also uh, have those running until the end of March 2024 in this particular funding cycle. Now alongside that we have established um, new schemes which are running fully funded as opposed to partially funded and they are going to be in a full funding mode until September of this year and then as of March um, sorry, excuse me, they will be receiving funding which was already agreed in a previous um, grants advisory committee, which was in November of 2020. And then that funding will bring them through to the point where all the schemes sync up together to the new funding cycle and are all partially funded in April 20 of 24. So that's the background and understanding the schemes. Um, Obviously, we can go through them in depth if that if there are any questions associated which you would like to discuss. Um, we then also have uh, some organisational uh, points in Teversham and there were some uh, remedial suggestions for how to look at that over the coming year, which I put in the appendix. Um, I can touch on that in a moment if there are some questions. And um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that even though the numbers are down, um, this the reach is up and the numbers are still doing well comparatively considering COVID and um, COVID's uh, impact on the schemes as a whole. Um, obviously establishing schemes during COVID was a challenge uh, for the simple reason that the incredible support that we had from community groups when people were unable to work or, or you know, in lockdown or isolation allowed for a lot of people to fulfil the role that this scheme takes in, in the community space. Uh, so just being aware of those somewhat changes. And that really is the summary statement and happy to go in depth uh, on anything that uh, 
committee members would like to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Handley has his hand up. Um, hopefully he's going to say uh, on behalf of the Over and Willingham uh, massive of how much we appreciate our community wardens and the incredible job they do. Yes, of course, but um, this, it, this falls in my portfolio, as you know. Um, I'd like to ask a question, Cecilia. I mean, we put down the poor ta uh, take-up in some villages and some parishes. We put it down to the, ward the, the volunteers, the COVID volunteers, who, having co made connections with people during the pandemic, continue to help them, which which is, I, I'm sure in some cases, or a lot of cases, that's absolutely true. But has the, um, uh, is there, are there any signs that numbers are picking up in recent months? Because I, this, this does concern me, mm. little, actually. Well, so the, the report numbers that I put in the appendix are current as of, um, what would that be, May. So you can s see that there, what that, sorry, oh, let me phrase that. The numbers you have are, are looking at the last year. In terms of improvements, yes, all of them have said that there are moderate improvements in terms of uptake, but I don't know what those figures look like as I haven't been privy to those numbers. But when I've spoken with organisers, they felt that there is an improvement this year. Um, I, I can't give you exact figures on that. I can go away and try and find out some further details if that would be of use or value, um, particularly if we're looking at the review down the line. When, not so much for mobile wardens, but just general reviews and figures. Sorry, sir, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Cecilia. I just wondered if you had a feel for it. I don't need the figures. It's just whether it's a feel. But, you know, uh, I, um, I think my view on this, Chair, is that we need to look at it critically. I don't think... I, 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 I am really... I've always been, as Cecilia, I hope, would su support me when I say this. I've been super supportive of it. And I, I, I hope we can continue... Um, substantially with it uh, but there may be some cases where we need to look at it and I'm sure that John with his um, you know his finance hat on will probably start to look very critically just at, you know just on the finances of it and whether or not some of these schemes are viable um, and that's that's really all I, I that's really all I need to say at this point because we, we're not taking any decisions so I think we just need to look at it with a with a fresh mind and, uh, I, and I really hope that we can continue to support this. So, uh, see, if you want to just answer those points that uh, Councillor Handley's raised, that'd be great. Yes, um, I, so just a follow on thought. Um, it's worth mentioning that obviously these, pro these programmes, the new ones particularly take time to bed in. So I think another year and, a re and the review at the end of this year will give us much better data in terms of the new ones and they'll be fully bedded in. There will be a natural attrition, um, I think as well, at the point where the new schemes, for example, have to uh, bring in their, their own funding and they have to s sort of uh, boost their partial funding as the, uh, the established ones do. And that will naturally kind of show what works and what doesn't over time. Um, and similarly, I think that um, we have the capacity for things perhaps as demographics have shifted, maybe there are opportunities that some things may amalgamate as one or two are already sort of showing there is possible movement there. So I think give it a bit more time and critical assessment, I, I think we're in a good place. Earlier in the meeting, we talked about the uh, the health of an oak tree. Um, I just wonder, Bill, if you've got um, a rundown of uh, what it is we're looking for in terms of the of the health of one of these schemes. Are there particular warning signs that that you think are worth noting? It's it's just numbers. Um, I mean, I don't have any trouble. I don't have any trouble with the, this, this council funding of the, with the, with the mobile warden scheme, particularly where you've got Age UK involved. But, uh, you know, we, we do. John is going to look at this critically with his finance hat on. I, I think as a, um, as a service that the council helps to support, I'm 100% behind it. I would also be very, well, very much welcome Councillor Ellington's views on this because she's close to the scheme, has been for years. Uh, and, and whether or not she agrees with me or not. I, I, I hope to, I'm saying here, look, I, I am willing to give this more time. I, honestly, I would be supportive of giving it more time, but we do have to, I think, at the very least, try 
maybe speak to Age UK and others and really try and get the message out better, uh, have a better message going out so that more people are willing to engage with the Mother's Warden Scheme. But, Chair, if you don't mind, can, can, can we hear from Councillor Huntington? Uh, yes, with your, with, uh, your permission, uh, Councillor Huntington, that's, uh, that's clearly what you have to say. Thank you. Um, yes, I've been worried, Bill, about um, the drop-in numbers. I perceive, having had a look at it quite closely in my village, that quite a lot of elderly people who were using or would use the warden service now have members of their families who are working from home and therefore available, whereas they weren't pre-COVID. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the hybrid um, scheme in relation to Fendrayton and Lulworth. The Fendrayton and Lulworth scheme is a real hybrid because it goes across two districts. It includes Fenstanton, and that is paid for by the county council, that element of it. And Fendrayton have got, I think, two, maybe three people, and Lulworth's got two, and they're all sort of four miles apart. Um, so the cost of actually running it. But they are absolute lifesavers to those four, four or five people in Lulworth and Fendrayton. So I've tried very hard. In fact, the two in Fendrayton, I personally went and knocked on the door and said, don't you think you need to get, oh, that's a good idea. And, and that worked. Um, one of them's blind, and, and that really was very useful. So I think it is about promotion. Um, I did knock on the door of a 93-year-old who was, I didn't even raise it. She raised it with me and wanted it. But then her relatives who lived next door were absolutely appalled that we thought somebody had suggested or, that they might not be doing everything that mother wanted so that one fell flat so it, it's about it's about sending the right message because that woman at 93 lives in a, a mobile home and she wanted somebody different to walk through the door some different contacts but her family weren't prepared to let that happen so I think we do have to wait and see if, if the working from home pattern changes and, and makes a difference for the mobile wooden scheme. Oh, I see you standing like a greyhound in the slip, but um, Judith, would it be all right if we heard from you first? Yeah, the um, Man Beach, Water Beach um, Chittering one has had similar kind of up and down and obviously I think we're still feeling that sort of COVID impact in a positive way because people had, I don't know how this will go forward. It's really hard to judge. And I think this report's really good because I think it highlights it and we're noting it and it's like not like it's been missed. Um, but it has that feeling of um, there's still a few bits which you can get for free and maybe people have become more aware of people who are lonely around them. However, a lot of people, you know, have gone back to work as in out of the front door, not not in their home. So um, we have to be, and we have to be so sort of sure that we're not missing people because that's what the whole thing is, isn't it? About missing them and keeping them. Um, and those people who have the mobile warden, certainly in the one that I'm really connected with, and with Age UK and the Water Beach Language Chittering one, I'm not so much with the Milton one, was they just, it is a lifeline and it is completely, the scope of what they do for what they've been paid to do is, you know, massive. They go way beyond and 
that's why you've got this complete sort of split, haven't you, between we can't have something running which is really got one or two people <laughs> in it, the whole scheme, but at the same time, you need, you so desperately need it because each individual really benefits from it. So I don't know if that's clear at all. I probably just muddied the water, but <laughs> I just think that's really, really important no, I, I, report, I, I, and it I, notes all these problems, I think. I think there's a, a very good adage of a stitch in time saves nine. And I just wonder how many stitches this, these schemes put in. Um, Celia, uh, uh, no problem, Sue. Um, I was just going to tell you a really lovely anecdote, and that's from my uh, warden in my village. She tried to phone one of her clients and got no reply. So she thought, I'll pop round. She popped round and heard a very faint voice saying, help, help. So she found this woman. She'd managed to lock herself in her shed. And she'd been there 15 hours. And there was nobody else that was going to come to that house for some days. So she saved that woman's life. And that's what it's about. Um, I think if we could go to Celia, and then I know Bill wants to come back in. Um, I, I'm mindful of time, but just exactly reiterating uh, Councillor Ellington's comment there, it is about, um, you know, keeping people safe fundamentally. And that includes things like, you know, keeping the hospital admissions down because then illnesses aren't going to spiral because they're caught in that moment or ahead of time. And also ensuring falls are minimised or right down as well. So it, very important. But in terms of the promotion side of things, as, we were as was being discussed there, um, obviously we could um, move to encourage all the providers to promote heavily, but we can also support the promotion process because we've done that with community transport. So that's all doable. Wonderful. Bill, do you want to come? Very briefly now. Uh, I'm a, a trustee of the Over Day Centre. They've got exactly the same problem, falling numbers. And I think it's for the same number, the same reason. And we have to, I'm afraid, we've got to, you know, you've got to realise or remind yourself that the people that the mobile warden scheme is serving are people who are usually quite elderly and they are not going to stay clients forever. And uh, so we've just got to keep plugging away to make the scheme, um, to bring the scheme to everyone's attention. And I think we need to be looking at carers and, and children of people who might be clients. I really do think that... Uh, Public publicity is absolutely critical for this. Uh, I mean, I think in um, Willingham, we've got the first memory cafe starting up. And of course, during COVID, these things weren't possible. So the landscape that we're working in is shifting and it, it, it is developing because as we emerge back into normalcy, um, we have these face-to-face -face contacts and hopefully these will be the word of mouth spurs to ensure that those who are eligible and suitable um, can be tied in. So I, I absolutely think that um, Celia's point about the ongoing costs or the unseen costs elsewhere in the system. You know, we know we're, broken, we're dealing with a broken social care system. Um, I hope that as, we, as these conversations and this committee continue, um, we will always be looking to the bigger picture as, to well, as well as to the granular detail. Um, if we are all happy to move on, um, then I would very much like to return the hot potato to Joe's. Can I just add one thing that newer members, yourself perhaps, don't know, and that is that we also have a lifeline service, you know? that's based um, in South Cam. So if you find anybody who wants one of those lifelines, that you press the button and it brings the either a hospital ambulance or somebody's fallen on the floor or whatever, we have the service that runs from South Cam. Fabulous. Well, could we send out and have a joke delivered? <laughs> Um, 
Are we all right to make a start on the next item while we're waiting on Joe's? Yep, absolutely. I'm just scrolling through my never-ending papers. Bear with me just one second. I'm yep. not sure I've got all the details. So just moving on to children and young people. Okay. Um, so again, this is a, an interim review. We're uh, Oh, sure, I won't start. I, would you actually like me to start before Joe joins or not? What do people? Yeah, would somebody mind going and put on, putting eyes on him? I tell you what, see, for those of us who are new bugs, why don't you give us an overview of, of why, why the pilot happened and uh, what we were expecting to see? Okay, sure. So, in summary, we had um, a surplus of uns well, a surplus. We had unspent funds from expansion across the mobile warden scheme, and that was previously agreed from 2021, and that made up about th well 38,000. And we also had um, the decision was made to increase that 38,000 with a further 40,000, uh, which was being provided by Cambridgeshire County Council. So we had this unspent funds that needed to be spent in an appropriate manner. This was the decision that we would trial it in this format and obviously with that top up amount. So we ended up with 78,000 as a total one off grant fund, which we have therefore piloted across this uh, financial year. And um, this was obviously made available to uh, voluntary and community sector groups and charities and so forth and applicants were available at work given the opportunity to apply for four to seven four to eight thousand pounds worth of um items and uh, support so we ended up with um 13 projects in total that applied and i think that came to a final total of seventy seven thousand nine hundred twenty uh 920 and 33 p and of those 13, we had a mixture. So we had mental health was the primary focus uh, with 80% of that being that. Then we had food and diet. And then we also, a couple of those came in and we had some antisocial behavior and then one that was much more just broad and wasn't specified. Um, so now really we wanted to see how far have they got at this point because it allows us to have informed views based on the future review that we are going to do at the latter end of July, as um, uh, Chair mentioned. So this is really to have the broad holistic view of what is going on across all our grants so that we can make that decision going forward it, and um, obviously ask any questions that you might have or um, have any considerations that you might want to feed back to myself, Catherine um, or um, Councillor Williams. So I think, what else do I need to tell you? I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, I'm happy to discuss any of the um, particular schemes if there's any questions you have. Um, if I can answer any questions around that to the best of my abilities, I will. And if not, I can always source that information. But obviously remembering they're only part way through the funding period and therefore um, their, some of their progress reflects that. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. That's um, great. I, mean, I think, as we said at the outset, if, if colleagues have thoughts when they're sitting in their armchair, even tonight, stick them in an email and send them to Celia, Cecilia, John, and Catherine, and then we'll we'll put them into the workshop and uh, thrash them about there. I think would be the best way of doing this. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Over to you again, Cecilia. Are you, so doing, num you doing number seven as well? Are you? Yeah, yeah, l yeah. Lucky number seven. I'm on that one as well. Do you want us just to well. note? Do you want us just to note six? Uh, and now, just yes. some information. It's just a note. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and I'll uh, move on to service take support. Take it as noted. Thanks. Okay, let me just jump through to that. Bear with me. Okay, so service support grants. Nearly there. So these will be coming up for review. Um, uh, sorry, I've just lost my page. Apologies. Just a second. So um, service support grants, again, it's another summary 
um, of the end of year report. Now with these ones, just as a reminder to yourselves when you were looking at um, the appendix that was associated with this one, the reason there were three columns and I greyed out a column is the finances were the three years of the scheme where the agreed amount had been uh, you know, offered up from uh, the year 2019, 2020, right up to 2021 to 22. And then we are now in the extension year, which is finishing up. So that runs through to the end of March 23, I believe it is to be accurate. So that's what the appendix, how to read the appendix uh, finances. So to summarize what we are looking at, um, basically we have, all the service support grants that cover a selection of different services, so from independent living through to housing and homelessness, and we have eight categories which all have a number of um, service providers within them. And we also have a, a policy whereby those who are in receipt of more than 10,000 have to submit uh, six, uh, six monthly intervals and yearly. So for some of our um, service providers they will be doing sort of the double reports throughout the financial year but most of them it comes to the annual report at the end of the year which is what this summary statement is and just to go back to the categories we've got independent living has two um, providers so we have arts and minds and cope within category two which is advice and advice services we have citizens advice we have disability cambridgeshire disability huntington which is also known as dish and we have reach Within category three, we have um, community transport, which currently is Royston District um, Community Transport and the Voluntary Network. Category four is Fit to Learn, which has Home Start within it. And then category five is um, VCS, and within that we have CCVS. Category six is the Combined Community Transport and Independent Living, and we have Care Network as a part of that one. Category seven is Planning and Economic Development, and within that we have Farmland Museum. And category eight, which comes out of a different pot, is housing and homelessness, but for everyone to see them again holistically, we have um, Cambridge Cyrenians, Cambridge Reuse, and Cambridge Women's Aid, but that comes out of our housing and homelessness pot. Um, so happy to go through in more detail if that's of help. We have the appendix with all the uh, summary statements attached, and um, if I can answer any questions on that, please fire away, and if not, please bring your thoughts um, to me, and we will then go through that at the workshop. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Cecilia. Right. OK, uh, colleagues, this is this is. The, the, they're all biggies, if you like, but this one is the biggie biggie right? With the service support grant. So if I might be make a request of you, uh, these papers hold quite some detail with regards to reports from various organisations and what have you give you some food for thought. Um, we might like to look this is a preemptive workshop, we might want to look at criteria perhaps that is applied at the moment. I mean, Cecilia's, I'm, I'm sure, mentioned it in the other ones, but these, these are some of the things that we might want to look at for the future um, and how, how we, we have a bang for buck, so to speak. So again, if you can have those thoughts, write them down, bring them to the workshop, send them to the officers first, so that they, they have a heads up and that there may be some homework they need to do, which then will assist us at the workshop. So if that's okay with you guys, we'll, unless anyone has a burning desire to say something, um, I think we'll probably leave it there for the moment. And I'll, I just thought reading it, I just thought it looked really good, really comprehensive, and I can't think of anything to add, <laughs> basically. Is that really unhelpful? But yeah take it to the workshop as it is, in my, in my opinion, but maybe I'm missing something. No, but you took the word. So that's wonderful. Right, Cecilia, thank you very much indeed for the presentation. Um, presentations, should I say. And as, as I say, we'll, we'll put our heads down now and have a good think and hopefully uh, provide back to you and Catherine some information. Oh, welcome back, Catherine. Um, I have uh, been some information the whole time. and some thoughts for the workshop. Okay. Thank you yes, very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Say again. Are we on AOB yet? There are no AOBs.
Absolutely. Before you do, Bill, um, uh, Catherine and Cecilia, do you have anything that you might want to say or anything in advance, any other points that we've missed with regards to the potential for the workshop? No, I think you've covered it. Thank you. Great. Before you let them go, I think Bill's... Yeah, yeah I, think I know, yeah. Fun. Okay, right. In that case, two, two shakes. Bill. Um, Catherine, uh, through the wonders of information technology has just reminded me that I need to tell you or I'd advise you that uh, we have a community grant strand for Ukraine support uh, which uh, needed a decision from the lead member which was me. Relatively small sums, about £300 to support uh, hosts and guests uh, and I've approved that. I mean there, there would, I could, we could have brought it to you and asked you, but, but to be perfectly honest with you, we need a decision and I thought there was absolutely zero chance of you saying no to it. So I've signed it off. So this is by way of a courtesy to tell you what we've done, okay? I thank you for the courtesy and uh, I'm looking at my colleagues around the table and uh, we equally thank you for the courtesy. So that's lovely. <laughs> that much, much obliged. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it's, uh, it's uh, of the moment and I think some of these things have to be acted upon. So thank you. Cheers, Bill. Um, okay. Anybody else got any points? Or do we head home? Thank you. In that case, the date of the next meeting is the 29th of July, 22, 10 a.m. This one. That's okay. We're trying to spread it around a little bit. Um, leaves me with nothing more to say. Thank you very much to our Dem team, Dem, Dem Services team, for the excellent input and digs in the ribs where necessary. Our two officers on the screen up here, and of course you guys, and have a lovely weekend. Thanks. Thank you.